day 41 then and we are off. Today we've got 22 miles between me here in Duga Bogdanya and I'm going to Estzagom and we've got an interesting day today. It's going to be a bit of a mixed bag because we have five kilometers to a place called Visegrad and then we're going to get a ferry across um, to another part where there's a big, I mean it's, I guess it's a mountain, it's a hill, um, somewhere in between the two of those but we've got a, a climb then to a beautiful viewpoint and I'm going to go up to the top of that and then we're going to head back down again the other side to another ferry crossing and then we'll make our way hopefully flat then I think by the river all the way into our final destination so yeah it's shorter it's like 22 miles so you know that's always a nice thing doesn't mean it's going to be easy those ones can sometimes bite you particularly if you've done longer days need to manage the body again today I think yesterday I was just starting to feel a bit of wear and tear so no heroics today the main thing I've got to do is get to the ferry in an hour I've got five, an hour to do 5k so that should be all right I'll do my usual kind of walking stint here and yeah spirits are high I've just had a really nice breakfast and you know one of the things that I'm really sort of holding on to is my friend Adam is coming out this evening he'll arrive very late about 1am at the campsite we're staying at tonight I think it's almost certainly the first night the bivy sat's coming out now I've said that lots and lots already and it hasn't come out because people have given me accommodation but finally I think it's time so this thing I've been carrying across the whole of Europe I'll finally get to use it um, this morning the quad it's not there at the moment so like I said sometimes these things go away a little bit um, couple of little sort of sensations in some of the tendons in the feet but that's always the way I slept really well which was good and I you know yesterday I just I flopped in my room after the run I ate what I bought from the supermarket and then I didn't go out for dinner I just I, I couldn't I didn't have the energy and I just lay on the bed basically and just read and chilled and I think you know some days those you need those where it's just stillness after you've done the run I think that really sort of helps support the body but um yeah i'm kind of looking forward to this one so that's always a good sign you know I've, i'm looking forward to this stage we've got this stage and then a bit more tomorrow and then hungary is done we'll be in slovakia heading our making our way towards bratislava so yeah lots and lots to be positive about today let's hope it kind of stays that way and uh yeah Let's get to that ferry because we missed that. <laughs> We've got an hour to sit around and wait, so that'll be a bit of a bump in the day. All right, the other thing is I've left later again today. Um, it's not been quite so hot here and it's a shorter day, so I just, again, I just thought I wanted to take a bit more time. Um, I will be back to doing the 4 a.m. as before long, I'm pretty sure, but um, yeah. Anyway, let's get on and I will speak to you guys further down the road. Made it to the first ferry we're going to go this bad boy we're going to go over to that side to Nagi Morosh and then we're going to go up one of these hills up here I don't know which one but one of them we're going to climb up here I think it's that one anyway and yeah so so far so good I've made the ferry on time 20 minutes early so I've got a little bit of time to chill here and uh, yeah all is good Happy.
So today's run, whilst I'm walking up this massive great big hill, I'm going to dedicate to my friend Adam. Adam is coming out to join me this evening. Now I've known Adam since I was a, a postgrad student at Journalism College and that's, I don't know, 20 years more. But Adam's been a great friend to me and he's actually supported me so much in my runs as well. So there's a couple of incredible stories. One, I was doing my first 100 mile ultra along the Thames and Adam came to meet me at halfway where there's an aid station where I stopped. And he just came down because it's, it's just when it gets dark, you, you have a stop, you see your family and you're just about to go out into the darkness on your own. And it's a very, very sort of difficult moment in the run. So Adam said, I'll come with you for three Ks or a K just to get you moving again. He was in his jeans, he was carrying a leather jacket and uh, we did the three Ks and he said, I'll come a bit further. And then he kept calling his wife and it was you know, turning into the evening, nines, tens, elevens, twelves, ones. By the end of it, Adam had run 17 miles when previously the furthest he'd run before that was a 13 miler. He'd done it in jeans, holding a leather jacket. And without Adam doing that for me on that day and helping me through the night, basically, the 100 miler would probably have been a whole different story for me. If the 100 miler doesn't get done, I don't go on to do other things. Then I'm around the Thames from sea to source, sorry, from source to sea, 190 miles in three days. And Adam came out in the middle of the night with that with his daughters, gave us food and sweets and supplies and came with us and just gave us this moment of, you know, real lift on a very, very hard day. And so he's been part of the story of my running and important times. And he's coming again to be a superb friend to me. And he's actually going to run some of the stages with me, which I'm so pleased about. He's going to try and do what I'm doing. And it's, it's fantastic for me to see that I've inspired Adam to do this. And I'm just looking forward to his company, his friendship. He's one of the most kind, generous, positive, happy guys I've ever met. And there's nothing that Adam wouldn't do for you. He's, uh, he's just an all round good person. And yeah, I can't wait to, to be in his company again and to have him come out. And so Adam, this run today, which is gonna take me to you, and including this massive hill that's making it hard to breathe, is for you, buddy. Just keep being you, Adam. You're absolutely one of the good guys. about two kilometers away now from the finish and for what's been I think now it's gonna be like a 20 mile day to take me close to seven and a half hours is um, pretty bonkers really that's um, yeah it's not been a good day not not mainly because of the time just stop start you know, ups, it, yeah, it's, that's not great. I'm not happy with that, really. Beating myself up a bit. I, I don't think I should have gone up the hill. It's, the whole day now, it's been long. It should have been a short one. I needed a short one for recovery. And because of the quad, you know, exacerbating that by coming down that big hill, going up it, it's, um, it's made this day into an eight hour mission, which has been a slog fest. And that means less recovery time. And with a couple of big days coming up, I'm just, yeah, I'm not happy with myself right now, if I'm really honest. Um, I've gotten a bit more cooked than I would like. I'm grumpy. <laughs> I'm finishing the day grumpy, which is not how I thought today would finish. 
because I thought it'd be like a nice short breezy one and it hasn't really turned out that way um, but it is done and that is the main thing made it to, from A to B I've now got to focus on trying to get this quad somehow back into shape I don't quite know what I'm going to do maybe look for a massage I, I don't know if, if it, it wasn't hurting initially this morning until I sort of went up and down the hill so maybe tomorrow if on rest it will be all right if I'm running flats but we've got some lumpy days coming up basically with I think it's like a 25 then a 40 then a 36 so there's a lot of work to be done in the next three days and if it, if it feels the way it does right now that's not going to happen so I'd, yeah I think that's also why I'm feeling a bit down but as I sort of say you, you, when you're tired like this it's never any good to judge you just have to go get some food sit for a bit rest and then reassess so first job though is just get it done So the end of day 41 then, and today has been a tough one. I think you'll have seen from, from the video from out on the road earlier. Yeah, difficult for many reasons. It was supposed to be an easy one. Sometimes, as I said before, the easy ones can turn out to be the hard ones. <laughs> you know, you sort of, you think it's because it's shorter or whatever, it's going to be easier and you can, yeah, you can get caught out by that. This was one of those days. Started just a little bit later so I could have a bit of breakfast and you know it's not quite so hot so that sort of tends to work out and then I had a nice little 5k run to the ferry the first ferry crossing ferry crossing over was wonderful you know it was good managed that easy and then on the other side I basically I changed my route a little bit to take in a climb so what I was going to do was imagine there's a bend in the Danube here originally I was going to run the flat road around the bend to get the other ferry across but somebody said to me there was a good view up at the top of a kind of a hill sort of mountain like 300 meters 500 meters up in the middle so i went up and then down across to the other town where i get the ferry now that seemed like a good idea ish at the time uh it's like a, you get a wonderful 360 view of the river bends and stuff and it is magnificent but i i kind of i hadn't really factored in the you know what had happened yesterday with my quad and I, I didn't really expect it to be quite so steep on the way down the other side. And in retrospect, it was a bad decision because it's damaged my quad further still. It took a lot longer than I thought it would because I got a bit lost. The trails weren't that well marked. Um, so I was out, it probably added two hours to my run to do not much distance. On the way back down, yeah, my quad wasn't happy at all. By the time I got down to the bottom, I was then faced with a walk essentially i then met alex alexander and who he had sort of found me on instagram and messaged me and he came out on his bike and met me and just so i came down off the climb bought me a bottle of coke and two bananas and you know i'd not met him but before but it was lovely to stop and have a chat and just for 20 minutes you know i really it was wonderful that he came out and it was really kind and we, we had a great chat and then off i went sort of to try and run basically the last sort of stretch to a ferry. Um, I think I had about sort of 10 miles to go at that point, but after coming off the mountain, I couldn't run essentially. It was too painful to put my foot down. So I was basically then walking. Got to the ferry, the ferry crossing took quite a long time. It was very hot. It started to get very hot by that point, you know, five hours in or something, it started to get really, really burny hot. I started to cook, get that feeling when you've been exposed too much to the heat you feel like you're in an oven there's no escape you know the ones where you really want, desperately want to go and find some shade and I couldn't so the last 10 k's 11 k's were also along a busy main road normally when you're running this to go you know five miles goes quite quickly you know it's quite that would have been an easy distance but when you're walking it it felt long and it was sort of dragging it out and by the time I finished the whole thing you know to do seven and a half eight hours for a 20 miler is um it's not great and it's not really just about the, it's not about pace or whatever it's just about exposure to the heat and the sun time on feet and the damage i've done to my quad um yeah and i'm kicking myself a little bit if i'm really honest because i wanted this this day should have been a really positive day where i got it done really quickly really early look forward to seeing my mate adam and 
you know, settled in and had a bit of it. It was supposed to be like a, almost like a rest day and it's turned out to be anything but. So a struggle, but we got it done. That's the main thing. Got from A to B. Um, and now I'm just doing my best to kind of recover and get this muscle back into some kind of shape. So I've been out and bought deep heat and Lord knows what, and I've been massaging it and trying to ease it off and, and basically loosen it up because it felt a bit tight. It's very tender to touch. Um, and just see if that can make it better for the morning, basically. And then tomorrow we'll just be running flat. So the danger is I've got a 25 miler tomorrow, then I've got a 40 miler, then a 36 miler. So yeah, I can't be carrying this into a 40 miler. It won't survive. So if that plan, this is the plan basically, keep treating it tonight, rest, sleep, wake up in the morning, get ready to go out and run, see how it is. If three miles in, it's pain for me. I think we'll just have to return back to Estegon, which is where we are, and have a rest day, basically. I think that's going to have to be it. And somehow we're going to have to reshuffle the schedule further down the line so we hit all the numbers at the right times. But I think there's enough wiggle room to do that. And, you know, I think my wife's given me some brilliant advice tonight. I've just been chatting to her and my mum. And they've sort of said, you know, you've got to make a good decision now, a smart decision now will pay a lot of dividends later. So rip up the schedule if you have to. <laughs> and I kind of agree with them. There's lots of people coming out to meet me at different points and we've organised, you know, these where they're flying into certain cities and what have you, but I, I almost can't focus on that. And I think people will have to work around me and what happens. You know, we've got to get Adam to Bratislava somehow. He's coming in from Budapest going out, flying home through Bratislava, but we'll manage it. And yeah, I've had some good food. I, I've rested a bit. I had a beer um, because it's been one of those kind of days and I just needed something. And I'm, we were supposed to be camping, but we got an apartment in the end because I, last thing I needed really on top of all of this was a really bad night's sleep tonight. So I'm now in, a, in an apartment. I can make a nice breakfast in the morning and all of that kind of stuff. So... Um, the bivy sack remains in the bag. <laughs> I will use it. I will use it. It will come out. And I'm just praying. Fingers crossed. I need you to send positive thoughts my way. That when I wake up in the morning, this this kind of quad situation is going. It's not quite in the quad. It's like like the bottom, close into the knee. Um, that muscle's sort of resolved itself, or at least enough so I can move sort of slowly over those miles. Fingers crossed. Um, I did feel very negative. Now I'm talking about it to everyone. It's starting to make me feel a little bit more positive, but I feel like it's not the end of the world. And the, yeah, I mean, we'll just have to see. You can't, you can only control what you can control, but um, yeah, I'm in a bit of a, a better mood about it than I was earlier. I was proper beating myself up for making that decision to go up the hill. It just seemed like a silly thing to have done. I could have probably had the whole thing done in four hours on the flat without doing any damage to my quad. But anyway, I saw the view. It was beautiful. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, we're trying to. Be, I'm trying to be positive. Trying to stay upbeat. And um, yeah, we'll see in the morning how we go again. Um, yeah. Anyway, that was me. I better go off. Get some more food into my face and and try and get some good sleep tonight. Adam will arrive at two o'clock in the morning, and I have to let him in. So I need to get some hours in before he buzzes that doorbell. Um, yeah, so that's it. Anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>